All right, for this video, we're going to take out the front uh, shock and spring on our 98 Integra GSR. Okay, uh, since it's the only bolt on this side, well, actually there's a nut and bolt on the bottom, but let me just go ahead and take out this 14 millimeter bolt here. There we go. That's connecting the, the fork to the shock up above. And then let's see, then we're gonna, I'll move to the bottom so we can disconnect the fork from the control arm and take that out. For the bottom bolt, uh, I got a 17 millimeter wrench holding the nut on this end. And then I got the impact gun. Well, you could probably go either way, actually, might be easier to do it the opposite because spinning the nut off is easier so I'm just gonna flip flop it all right there we go there we go i just pushed on the other end with a screwdriver and it backed itself out I can wiggle the fork off. There we go. And that can just sit there. It's out of the way. Uh, then we need to remove these bolts that are supporting the brake line. Twelve millimeter. Uh, I don't think. Let's see. The other one in the back, probably be too much trouble to get the gun in there, so I'll just use the ratchet. If you have trouble with uh, rust issues, and this bolt is hard to get out, actually, I want to take this out first, just because the whole shock twist once the fork's disconnected. Alright. Oh, and the bolt that goes in the back is longer than the bolt that goes in the front, so just make sure you put them in the right place. Alright, so we got our hose freed now. All we gotta do is go up top and unbolt uh, from the strut tower. All right, so we use a 14 millimeter socket to take out the nuts on top. Just get ready because it's gonna drop once you do the second one. So I'm gonna hold it down below. Okay, so to clear some room, actually, I'm going to go ahead and take the fork, just pull it up and over the axle, and then I push the brake line to the other side so I can drop the assembly and pull it forward. And there you go. Uh, when you get to the part, or to the point of removing the spring or taking the assembly apart, uh, it's just going to be the same as the rear. Uh, we have a video that you can click on to see it in detail. But you're just going to clamp your coils uh, on this one. Two, three, four, five, six. You probably want to clamp at least six of the coils. And then, uh, and don't forget to loosen the top nut. You can hold the rod with the five millimeter Allen wrench. This is a 14 millimeter nut. So make sure that's loose, but don't take it all the way off until you have it clamped and then you have the tension um, removed from between the top and lower mount where the spring can move a little bit. Um, so yeah, refer to the other video. You can see all that in detail. And then we're gonna go ahead and just put this back in and show you how to reinstall it, which is just the reverse of the removal. But we'll go over that right now. 
Okay, so when you're disassembling and reassembling the shock and spring, uh, you definitely need to take note of the position of the top mount studs and the lower fork. As you can see, it's not like the rear where it's just parallel. This, this line is parallel to the line below. It's actually at an angle. Um, I don't see any distinct markings that line it up. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want to make sure that your angle, just take note of how it sits uh, before you take it apart. And that way um, you won't have trouble putting it back in. So like I said, it's just the opposite. Installation is the opposite of the removal. So we're just gonna put the assembly back in, line it up with the mount above. There we go. And I'm just gonna put at least one nut on to hold it in place. There we go. Okay, so then you gotta get your hose in the right position there. And then you gotta get your fork back on. There we go. So the fork can slide back up into place. Uh, if it wants to go. And the bolt goes into, slides along an indentation in the back of the shock. So you'll notice that the fork doesn't go down, won't drop off anymore once you put this bolt into place. Okay, to get the lower bolt in, you'll probably have to do some twisting and wiggling. And get it started. And then, uh, let's see. Yeah, getting it to all line up might be a little tricky. Even when it's lined up, it's still difficult. And then getting it to go through the other side would probably be the most difficult. Might have to pry on it a little bit. Tighten it down. So I'll tighten this one down. And then we'll tighten the rest of it. This guy. All right, so I'm just gonna hand tighten the 14 millimeter bolt. It squeezes the base of the shock, so I don't wanna over tighten it or under tighten it. Cause then you'll get a rattle or maybe clunking. Okay, so I tighten that one down. Then I'm just putting in the bolts that hold the brake line. Uh, there we go. And I'm just gonna hand tighten those as well. They don't need much torque on them. This one will be easier with a little ratcheting wrench. There we go. Okay. All right, and then the last thing we gotta do is just tighten the nuts at the top. So, just gonna tighten the 14 millimeter nuts on top. And we're all done.